The reason I got the Snoop Dogg. Okay, it's a flight path day. It's also like 4.35 o'clock. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods, yeah. Today's subscriber sponsored request coming in hot for my boy, Neil Sim. Neil Sim slid in the DMs, the request box, hit me with the request and the fundage for a steak and frites. So we're gonna make our own fries. Frites is fries in Francais. We got a big old boy steak here. This thing is probably like two, two and a quarter inches thick. I got the guy to special cut it. And then we're gonna just do some magic out here. He said he wants a side of my choice. So I'm going with mushrooms because I love steak and mushrooms, but we're gonna fancy them up. We're gonna jazz these guys up. But we've got pretty much all the ingredients here. We're gonna be using the fryer, the grill, and be eating outside. And also my guy wants me to get a little buzz on. So he said, I gotta grab a wine, a nice red bottle of wine. And the thing is, I have to drink the whole thing. So we're gonna get a little bit giddy, probably a little giggly in this one. And then I'll show you what wine I chose. You can maybe tell just from here it is, but the front is a surprise. It just called out to me in the store. So steak frites, that's the challenge. It's gonna be delicious. It's BBQ season, it's beauty out. And we're gonna have a nice delicious meal together on behalf of Neil Sim. Thank you, brother. Okay, so first up, the most tedious thing for this will be these frites. They are gonna be a process. I got some russet potatoes here, and I consulted Lizzie Lou's channel for a little extra advice on how to make a nice, crispy, golden, almost McDonald's-style frite. I wanna make them just like that. I just want a nice, delicious, golden, crispy-style, thin frite. So we definitely have to peel these guys first. So just grab your peeler and go to town, get them all nice, and skinless because we don't want any skins on these okay beautifully peeled nice and rinsed we're gonna go ahead and get these running through the mandolin right around there is good for me all right so here you go we have our nice sliced julienne almost matchstick style fries. We're gonna go ahead and rinse these off in some water and get all of the starch kind of off until the water in the bowl that you're washing them runs clear. All right, next step is we definitely have to boil up a pot of water because we're gonna boil off these fries for just a few minutes. So while that water's coming to a boil, we gotta whip up a nice garlic frioli for these frites. Mayo, horseradish for bite, lots of cracked pepper. We got a little bit of salt and a bit of fresh chopped parsley. In she goes. And of course, mini whisk and stir. She's steaming. We got a rolling boil, here we go. Almost forgot the most magic part, one tablespoon white vinegar. It will protect the fries in a sense and make it so they don't break. Almost goofed it, but the vinegar is crucial. Stir it around and mix it in let it do its thing. Okay, so these fries are at three minutes. Gotta get them out. Sprawl them across this tray. Even distribution, separate them out. Okay, now we go ahead and let these just kind of cool down and do their thing for a while until they get back to room temp. Okay, fries have set up. They are now room temp and we're gonna do them in just little batches, but we're going in the oil for one to one and a half minutes. Be vigilant, stay vigilant at 325 temperature. All right, that's it right there, one minute. Just a tiny little bit of a cook on these, just a blanch. Okay, fresh tray over here. We're gonna lay these out, same way as before. Line tray, so the oil soaks. All right, last little bit of this load coming in hot right here. These now go into the freezer. A little bit of mushroom prep. I got these mushrooms here washed and stemmed and I like to have them cut into quarters. So that's what I'm gonna do here real quick. Okay, quartered mushrooms into the bowl. We've got a hit of canola oil, a splash of white wine vinegar, a nice, just a little drizzle of sesame oil. This stuff is very strong. And a good amount of cracked pepper. And just a little bit of garlic. All right, so we just mix that up, put that off to the side until we're ready to saute. 
Time to season up this absolute monster of a steak that I got cut for me. Peep this behemoth, two inches thick. I got it fresh cut just a few hours ago. Nice strip steak, absolutely massive. It's gonna take some a good little while to cook. Copious amount of salt. We got kosher salt here. A little pad in. We got the pepper, of course. Copious amount of pepper. I love a good amount of pepper. We'll switch a roux to the other side now. And then with the excess on the plate, we're gonna do this side here. Just drag it around and stick it in there. And that is seasoned and good to go. All right, y'all, initial touchdown. Let's go. <laughs> That's it right there. Initial touchdown. A little smush so get those flames up we're gonna go about I want to say about five to six minutes on each side for the sear we're gonna get this side nice and then we're gonna move it over to the low slide and we're gonna do convection bake essentially after that all right about three minutes in we're just gonna put a nice 45 on this oh if it'll lift make it lift hey there you go I'll just hit it with a real nice 45. Press her back in. Oil to this side before we flip. Rub her around even with the tongs. Pop it up. See what we're working with. Perfect crisscross. 45 on this one as well. All right, about two more minutes there. Another 45 here. Okay, so now that we have our nice diamond sear on both sides, keep this side pretty much cranked up hot. This side as low as it can possibly go. And we're gonna just kind of convection bake this until it feels right. Now right now I got a rare. I'm looking for like a medium probably. I like a medium. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this sit for a while. 10 minutes or so, hope for the best. I'm hoping it's not rare or overcooked, but to be honest, I'm not sure what we're going to get. I'm pretty skeptical, but we'll see. We'll let it rest. Urat, while that steak is coming to temp and juicing out everywhere, we are making our McFrites. 340, fresh oil, nice and crisp. We'll see, six to eight, six, six minutes maybe? Ooh, rot fungi is back hot again ultimately i just wanted to wilt some arugula or rocket in into the mush but yeah i basically just want to wilt some greens into these and then we're gonna plate those all right my guy wanted side of my choice this is my side fancy mushrooms all those seasonings salt pepper sesame oil everything Wilted greens, the whole lot of it, real quick. This is what we gotta do. You got the Parmigiano Reggiano. You gotta come through and grate on. A little Parmesan cheese on top, of course. And lastly, would you believe it or not, way from the top rope, real thin and just light, really super light. Just a touch of honey. Not a lot, just the tiniest little string of honey. And that's what's up. All right, and lastly, those that need to be the freshest are the frites. The McDonald's crispy, a little more than McDonald's style, just crispy frites, that's what's up. But while the oil's hot, we gotta get in there with some salt. So we come in with some salt and we toss. And we jostle around with the salt. And we toss and we joss. And we get them nice. And then we come on in with this right here. Bang boogie. There you go. You got your frites with my side. And a big old rested. Look at how rested. Steak. So we're gonna plate this up with all the sauces. Get into the last couple glasses of these wines and go outside and have a nice delicious 
scorching hot meal. Okay, before we get to the meal, wine reveal time. Rolling in with my sipping on gin and juice. <laughs> Lay back. <laughs> Went with the Snoop Doggy Dog, 19 Crimes, Cali Red. Let's go ahead and pop the top on this and get a glass. Got that Snoopy signature on the label, nice and crispy and clean. Got our wine opener, our tool, as he used to call it in the industry. Yo, you, you run up to tables when you don't have your tool. Hey, you got your tool, you got your tool. And then you get your tool out. And I always opened it illegally. I haven't opened a bottle of wine in a long ass time, but this is not smooth at all. But I always opened it like illegally from the very tippy top. I didn't like going from underneath. I like going right from this little cap here. Cause you just do that and then you pop this tiny little piece like that, which is perfect. So a little tip, you can just kind of like lean the cork here and then lean it in and you pretty much get center every time. And then you just obviously proceed to dig in, try to dig in almost the whole way, like just like about there. And then you come in like this, one, the next step. And then if you're truly at a table, you wanna pull this and you wanna do a last final wiggle and you're not supposed to hear it pop. Otherwise it's bad wine service. This one is for Neil. Cheers, brother. Really sorry for the delay on this one. First sip for you. All right, yo, hey, how are ya? I gotta tell ya, I gotta keep these on. It is, it's too hot to trot. It's too sunny to be funny. No, I wanna be kinda funny, but <laughs> I don't know if I can. I gotta tell you, this has been a cooking adventure. Multiple days. Ultimately, I have to say, big shout out to Guns. Do, 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 and double, triple, quadruple thank you to Neil Sim coming through with the doll hairs for this video. It's been uh, prolonged to say the least, but we're getting to it now. So, you can see, nice day hot day patio with your daddy -o. did i really just say that i hope it didn't we got the shades on for hater blockers it's all good the thickest steak you've ever seen or at least for me that i've ever seen i've never, never cooked anything like this i hope it's right uh substantial dope mushrooms being the side my lizzie lou copycat uh frites and then the snoop doggy dog 19 crimes wine and to be honest we're getting low and that's why this video might be a little more fun i got like about a glass or two left in there because this has taken me quite a while to uh to do to throw together to put together i got mad sauce on the side i might be a little mad saucy as well i'm keeping shades on due to many reasons mainly weather but uh let's get into this so i guess first things first is let's pour wine the reason i got the snoop dog okay it's a flight path day it's also like 4 35 o'clock and we're kind of buzzed up from cooking and drinking and wines, but that's okay. And that's fine. What I'm really trying to say is this, is that, uh, <sighs> cheers to you. Cheers to Neil. Cheers to the sim and the simulation. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, but for real, for real, for real, I'm really trying to say, when he hit me with his request i immediately knew everything else that was going to happen i already knew all this da, 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 da. but i didn't know the wine because I'm, I'm, I'm not really like a wine guy and so in my head i was like what am i going to do and then i i walked in the liquor store and the first wine that i saw basically in like the first aisle was snoop dog was wine i was like it just fits like it fits my personality it fits everything oh no wait i gotta take my eyes off for this one okay come on did i really do it that deep we gone we we's gone keeps eating those 
All right, so we got sauces. We're gonna have to have sauces on deck. This is some of the steak juice. I'm gonna steak juice a bite. And we're gonna put our all our sauces up front for our dippings. This being our aioli. But here we go. The crust, the middle, the that one, and the this one. And I think ultimately, I weirdly am gonna try the aioli on, on it because it's got horseradish and mayo and things like that. Mmm. Mmm. It's so, so. It's so, so good. Okay, all right. Double check, triple check. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like I said, I told you that the bottle would come into effect, and the bottle is affecting me. I'm almost done the bottle it would be a, a weird little video mm -hmm. Mm. to y'all that say that ketchup doesn't belong on a steak It's kind of like saying ketchup doesn't belong in a burger. It does. <laughs> I hate the hobby, snobby, hidey tidy attitude of that because it's like steak is beef and beef is burger and burger is a bunch of things that has ketchup. I've never understood the whole hoity-toity mentality of no ketchup on your steak. Makes no sense. Okay, right here. These are my... Mmm. Oh my god. My high-end shrooms. And this is what I'll say. My man's left me open to any... Uh, any side I want. And I just... For me, shrooms and uh, steak... go together hand in hand but when you fancy them shits up with wilted and sas sesame oil vinegar parmesan it's like you're getting a, a very complex. Ooh, mommy. Flavor, but also just an ooh, mommy mushroom. Like, ooh, mommy. Like, this, this tastes really good. And that's what you should be after. It's something tasting really good. So cheers to that. with the wine now we got to get into these freights a little crispier than maybe i wanted that said though let's put them in this in this aisle I think they're ultimately pretty banging though. Like, look, come on. Where do you know as a business that serves thin and crispies?
like this on, on some matchstick shit. I'll say this though, they could have used a minute or two left. I pushed them till they were golden. Just bombarded by flies. Fries door is still what's up. They're amazing. All right, so as I'm munching on these fries, these steak frites with the wine and everything. I gotta tell y'all that this reminds me very much of a job I used to have. One of the best jobs I ever had. in terms of probably the people that I used to work with. But uh, I used to serve a place I've talked about on this channel before, actually where I met my most recent ex. <laughs> Right, the last person I dated, y'all know her from the Chan Chan. But regardless of that and anything, um, working there, we sold, uh, we did sell a steak frites as a dish. Mm hmm. But we also just sold. A basket of frites. And we made good ass frites. More so to that, we made better sauce. The dipping sauce for the frites. I remember during like our, I want to say that kind of first like week or two, like grand opening ish type thing. <clears throat> we had people come in obviously, and uh, I had a deuce, and a deuce is like. Usually uh, in server life, you have like a, a four top, a eight top, a 10 top, or a do. So it's like, that just indicates how many people at your table. So I had a bunch of tables, but I had this one table that was a deuce. And it was two women And I could kind of tell that they were ultimately there just to try the cocktails. And you could tell that by what they order. And, uh, 
they ordered cocktails and they were gonna have a little bite. So they ordered the frites and sauce. Now on the menu, the menu didn't clarify that the sauce that comes with the frites And this sauce is amazing. I'm still trying to recreate it to this day. And the dude that I work for, we still talk to this day. And he gave me his best guess of the, of the recipe of the sauce because he kind of doesn't even really truly remember. Because the restaurant closed down. But. The sauce itself contains cooked, like very cooked thoroughly cooked bacon and as you eat the sauce you can't tell you can't look at it and see that there's meat in it is blended so finely and it's crispy it's crispy bacon like it's not fatty bacon it's crispy bacon so when he was <laughs> i'm serving this table who's clearly coming in on uh Some new, like, scope in the situation out, like, gonna write about it type situation because it's a brand new restaurant. I could just tell that they were like writers or whatever, right? So they're balls deep in this basket of fries, waiting for like two appetizers that they ordered after that. Because bullshit writers that are trying to, like, write up about new... Like, they're trying to be, like, cr critics and columnists. So they just sit in on, like, new restaurants and they just basically... Spend as little as they can and try to be as bold as they can in their writings to try to, like, get on in the city. Like, New York, Toronto, Japan... Paris, all these places, like people who want to write about food, they think they're dope. But really what they do is come in, they're cheap as fuck, they try like something simple, they try a couple more simple things, not spend a lot of money, and then they write a little review being like, servers were this, no, 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 whatever, whatever. <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> and this is what these people ended up being, this is why it's funny. So it's these two girls, and to my, to my surprise, <laughs> these like young critics are like yo these, fr these these fries are great but this sauce is amazing <laughs> and i go to her i go yeah i know it's so good i'm addicted and i go it's because it has bacon in it and as she's shoving like watch this she's got free it's like this and it's like it's like she's dipping it like this it's like literally that much sauce I go, it's because it has bacon in it. And she goes, ah, 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 ah. And she goes, what? And I go, yeah, there's bacon in the sauce. Like, really cooked bacon. And she goes, <laughs> I'll still remember it for the rest of my life. It's one of those memories I'll remember for the rest of my life. She goes, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> she goes, <laughs> she goes I'm vegan. <laughs> I go. I go. I just look at her and I go. <sighs> I go. Oh. I go. Oh. Like I just literally. Oh. Because I'm surprised. <laughs> she can't. She's stressed. And I go. 
Well, I guess you should have clarified that at the start of the meal. Like, sorry. And then I go, but you were just bragging. I literally said this. I go, you were just bragging about how good the sauce is. And it's probably in part because it has bacon in it. And I just kept moving. I didn't give a shit. Simply for the fact that... I mean, ultimately, she didn't declare or clarify that... Uh, she was vegan. Like it is what it is. If you want to leave, if you want to get freaked out, you want to dip. That's cool. But even funnier to everything is the fact that <laughs> as a vegan, you just pray as a sauce. I mean, it's a mayo-based sauce, so it's... There's eggs anyway, so I don't even know how she was claiming vegan, but she was just pissed at bacon, I'll say that. Because that's one thing I did realize in Toronto as I lived there. There was all these, like, vegans, but it's like, they would sometimes let mayonnaise, like like an aioli, they'd let it slide. Like, well, it's just an, it's just like... Especially if, if they got like this much in a uh, in a ramekin, they'd be like, "Well, it's like an uh, it's like a, a thirty tooth, a thirty second of a of a of an of an egg yolk and a white beaten into an aioli." Like, you're like, "Well, that's still not vegan, though." Like, it just the con the contradiction has always been hilarious. But anyways. I will always, I will, I, I don't think I'll ever not remember that just because I personally love the sauce so fucking much <laughs> and everybody did. It was one of the main selling points of the restaurant and then because they didn't specify just to see the, just, just the just the dismay on her face when I was like, there's, there's, there's bacon in that. And she was like, <gasps> and I was like, it's probably why you like it so much. Like that's probably the deciding factor of why it's so good. Right? Like we all know that sauces are good and things are good. But when you take a moment to praise the sauce, and how often have you heard of uh, that crispy bacon being in a sauce? Like, very rarely do you hear about bacon being a sauce. Mm. So that was my favorite part of the consideration. It's like Loki, she fucking loved the sauce. Oh. Mid key didn't know the full constitution of the sauce. And low, mid slash high key freaked out about 
how amazing the saw she's on it was when she found out. that there was pigs in it. It was so motherfucking mic drop though in my own head. Like I went back to the kitchen, I brought, <laughs> I remember. Cause she was like, I can't eat this anymore. And I was, and <laughs> she goes, I can't eat this anymore. I can't eat this anymore. And I go, well, I mean, low key, like you could still eat the free, the fry, like you could definitely still eat this anymore. Just with normal sauce. But she was so taken back. <laughs> <laughs> So I remember I had to bring back the fry basket to the kitchen, to the chefs, and be like, <laughs> as the chefs, I was like, yo, this woman and her partner over here, they love the frites and they love the sauce. Like they were head over heels in the sauce until they understood that there was bacon involved in the sauce because they're v they're vegan or vegetarian whatever i don't know i think it was vegan though i remember vegan and the guys in the kitchen the chefs of the restaurant who owned it because they were they were cooking for the restaurant they were like okay so does she want to go like does she want to like what's happening and i was like yeah I, I don't like she just was sending it back and they, they were like can you just send her out like away because and that's what's dope about good chefs like that who have integrity is like it was a canadiana restaurant they were serving um you know oysters and uh, bone marrow and actually horse meat they were serving uh horse tartare so raw horse uh, tartare but i just respected their integrity to be like Get her out of here. She's not for here. We don't need her here. We don't want her review. She's impartial. She's not she's not a thing. Like she doesn't exist like in in our market. Like she's not supposed to be here. She doesn't respect meat. She doesn't respect both sides of the spectrum. And to be honest, that was one of the best restaurants I ever worked in because the people were so open, free-spirited, and nice. But also, <laughs> we got it. We got into some way too crazy shit, and I made some friendships there that were detrimental to my health, but also very open to my drug and alcohol-induced experiential awesomeness of life. To where it's like. Okay, well, I mean, I've experienced enough to where it's like, I'll just die now. <laughs> like, I've lived the basic pack. Like, I'm good. I've done more than you. Sicker than your average. Pop a twist. Cocaine off instant. Wait, what? Did I just say that out loud? It's too, it's too many wines. Anyways, but for real, holy. Okay, so the mushy is the best, the fries the best, the sauce the best. I'll say this, the the I've pretty much finished I don't know, most of the steak, like definitely not much left. It got a little carnivorous near the end and it just kind of uh, if I'm being really honest, it kind of put me in the seat of the of the of the vegan with the bacon dip. Also, it's like five o'clock and it's so hot out, and I'm pretty much gassed at this point. Anyways, Neil, love you, brother. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it, and then we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>